Today on the channel, we're going to be taking a look at the Ambernick RG552. This is the latest and greatest portable emulation handheld console from the fine folks over at Ambernick. Now, the packaging for these products are always bare bones, very basic, not even really going to spend any time on it. But inside the box, you will, of course, get your user manual slash instructions. You will get a nice wall adapter, USB-C charging connection. So very quick, fast charge, nice little wall adapter. Um, even Apple won't even give you a wall adapter these days. So that's handy. Then you also get a cleaning cloth and a protective screen cover for this beautiful new display that we got because we have a 5.3 inch IPS display on this RG552. The display itself looks great from any angle, left, right, top, bottom. You're not gonna see any washout or color bleed. You're not gonna see light emitting from the sides or the bottom or anything like that. I mean, this, this display looks fan freaking fantastic. I gotta say, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it is actually touchscreen enabled too because this does have dual boot functionality. So you can boot this into Android, use the Android application, the App Store and the Google Play Store and things like that to download your favorite applications, games. Um, you can use touchscreen controls or the built-in controls depending on the uh, Android software that you're using and whether or not it supports the actual external controls. But internally, we're running here the Linux, aka Botocera, and it's your standard, you know, basic run-of-the-mill consoles sorted. Here's your UI, very simple, easy to decipher. I mean, everybody knows how to operate this. I mean, you just pick what system you want. Brings up the submenu, pick your game, hit start, and you're good to go. You can go into the menu options by hitting the start button, and you got your standard user interface options, your control interface options. I mean, all sorts of different things you can go in here to change. You can connect this to Wi Fi, um, download, scrape your own content. If you want to change your aspect ratios of the games, maybe you don't like the 4 3, 5 4, maybe you want to go to 16.9 and stretch them all, you can do that, or you can remove bezels. Um, looking at the system itself, we've got dual analog sticks, so analog stick on the left and the right, and they do support L3 and R3. You get a nice sturdy D-pad, functions quite well. Uh, I think it's got a, a rubber membrane back there. It feels really good to the touch. Buttons are nice and clicky and responsive. Uh, they don't feel mushy. They don't feel like uh, those candy buttons we see a lot of times. Up top, you got your L1, L2, R1, R2 buttons, then a ginormous exhaust vent up here. Um, when you first power on the device, you will hear this fan spinning, but as soon as you hear any kind of audio coming from the game, it basically drowns that out. So you don't have to worry about excessive fan noise or anything like this, even under high pressure loads. Um, it, it's quiet enough to where you're not ever gonna notice it. You got a mini HDMI port here, so you can connect this to a television and you can capture your game play, or you can just essentially play it on a larger screen television if you want. If you do run the Linux games um, standard out of that, it'll automatically put bezels on that for the outer borders. Uh, you can turn that off if you wish, but I think that was a nice little touch where it just automatically includes that. That way you don't have the black bars. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, USB-C for external controls, USB-C for charging. Bottom of the device, we've got speakers on each corner, left and right. You got two micro SD card slots. The one over here on the left is essentially gonna be your operating system. If you wanted to boot into the Android OS, you're gonna to have to remove the card completely and then power on the device and it just natively will boot into the Android OS running off the internal memory. Now, if you wanted to boot into something like this, the Linux slash Batocera, then you would put in the supplied SD card that you get with your order. On this side, make sure it's all the way pressed in, power on, and then you'll get into this Linux system. We also have a reset button here. It's out of the way enough where I haven't run into any issues where I've been playing games and accidentally hit something, so that's nice. And then over here, we also have a function button. You're gonna use this to do various different things within the menus. You can back in and out of your gameplay. You can pull up sub menus for things like retro arch or your main menus or things like that. So that's kind of handy. This is essentially gonna be your games. Uh, there's many options online. You can get uh, this directly from their AliExpress store and you can get loads and loads of games preloaded on a card or you can order it without a card. They get lots of different things. In fact, you can actually kind of upgrade, get yourself a nice little hard carrying case that comes with some of the upgrade kits online. You can get that nice little storage for your wires and everything. And they also offer different wall adapters for your EU uh, customers out there. So don't feel like you're getting left out in the cold without a standard wall adapter for your country of origin. On the right hand side, we have our power button. You're going to long press that to power the device on and off. Left hand side of the device, you got your volume toggle up and down. 
And then around back, you've got two rubber grips here, one on each side for comfort and make sure this is not gonna slip out of your hand. And then you've got an intake vent here and you will feel some air moving around once you're holding this device in your hand along your fingers. Uh, natively though, my hand, the way it positions, my fingers kind of rest over here away from the rubber grip. So I wish this was kind of designed slightly different, maybe had a, a curve, you know, rounded edge here at the bottom. I think it would a little be a little more ergonomically friendly for my adult size hands, but I can understand it. I mean, Ann Burnett essentially didn't really reinvent the wheel. This looks very akin to a lot of their other devices. Overall, I gotta say I'm very happy with the build quality of the device. Even though it is a plastic shell, everything feels sturdy and it doesn't feel like if I was to drop it, anything was gonna break. The D-pad performs great. The front face button, shoulder buttons, everything works well. Joysticks are not too loose. The R3 and the L3 work great as well. So overall build quality, very happy with it, especially the screen. Like I said, it is a beautiful, gorgeous display. On the Android side of thing, if you're gonna use the touchscreen a lot, uh, make sure you have a microfiber cloth handy because you will be leaving fingerprints everywhere on that. So keep that in mind if you're a heavy Android OS user. In terms of performance on the Linux side of things, all your old school consoles, your handheld devices, all that's gonna work great. Sega Saturn will be a little bit of a mixed bag, but I was pleasantly surprised with how many 3D games on the Sega Saturn system were actually working quite well under this. So that was impressive thanks to that new chipset. Dreamcast works great. Sega Naomi and a Thomas Wave were a mixed bag as well, but for the most part was a pleasant experience overall. All your arcade things, your Neo Geo, Final Burn Alpha, Capcom, MAME, all that's gonna work great. PlayStation 1's gonna work great. PSP is gonna be a mixed bag, but for the most part, I'd say 70% of what I've tested works really well, and some of those need a little extra tinkering, maybe a frame skip or two, and you'll be good to go and make those playable. But overall, for the most part, emulation has been really really great on the android side of things even the most advanced games that i tested with heavy 3d um, setups all worked phenomenal there's the ones that you can use with the touchscreen controls and there's other ones that have the external controls tested both of those all work great and back to the linux side of things you can actually use this in tape mode which you can have a vertical setup so if you want to have some vertical shooters and play games that way you can not really ideal in my opinion in terms of the ergonomics of how this feels in your hand playing it like that. But if you like that type of thing, it's an option out there for you. But enough talking about it. Let me show you some direct capture footage of the emulation so you can judge for yourself. Another great feature of this dual boot Android side of things on the RG552 is the fact that you can run more advanced emulators like Dolphin. Now Dolphin of course is set up for GameCube and Wii games and I did test quite a few GameCube games to mixed results. Right out of the gate with no tweaking or anything like that these games do run but unfortunately they are not running at the 
uh, desired frame rate. So you're essentially gonna be running at basically almost half speed and you can just tell everything is kind of lagging and I wouldn't consider these playable. Now, the positive side of things is this is right out of the gate without any kind of modifications whatsoever, no settings tweaks or anything like that, no custom firmware. So this leads me to believe that hardware wise, this system is more than capable to run a lot of these GameCube games. Software wise though, it will need some custom OS that hopefully the community can put together. Maybe some more settings tweaks inside the Dolphin emulator to really optimize these games. But for the most part, right out of the gate, it's not really gonna be a great experience for the GameCube. At the end of the day, I'm pretty happy with the RG552. I think the standard emulation performance is quite good on it. The screen looks great, the controls, everything is nice. Standard MSRP on this is $227 and goes up from there depending on how many games you want preloaded. If you want games preloaded, if you want accessories like the different wall outlet adapters, the you know the hard carrying case, things like that. But overall, it works well, it does what it's supposed to do and it looks great doing it. However, if you're somebody out there that's looking for something right out of the box that requires no tweaks, no settings, changes, or anything like that, and you just wanna play all these more advanced things without any kind of custom tweaking or knowledge or know-how or anything like that, this probably isn't for you. However, if you're a little more knowledgeable, a little more tech savvy, and you don't mind going into the settings, going into things and in submenus, and really optimizing this to play more advanced things like GameCube, Sega Saturn, PSP, then you'll be quite happy with this device overall. And if you're just looking for something that kind of does a little bit of everything, has that Android side of things, so you can download things like Netflix, Disney Plus, and have a portable media device that also plays your favorite retro games, then this is maybe something you want to consider looking into. So that is it for this video review. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that like button. Share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. It really means a lot.